Good evening and good night and welcome to the It's Your Perspective talk show. It's uh, Thursday, uh, April 30th, 2015. My name is David, a.k.a. Kimba, a.k.a. Christian, alongside Soup. Soup, we're back again. Yes, I live and direct. Yeah, man, that's how it goes. Uh, this is the It's Your Perspective talk show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 p.m. until. Uh, we do have a website. Uh, actually, we do have a telephone number, 340 340- Two zero one nine zero zero five. You can also text us on that number three four zero two zero one nine zero zero five. Reach us tonight. We do have a guest in the studio tonight. Uh, but first, you have to go to our website, streaming live from the vi.com. Streaming live from the vi.com. All one word. Go to that website. Click on Watch Us Live Soup, and guess what? They'll see us live, man. We do have a guest tonight in the studio. Uh, he's here again. Uh, author Gary James, wave to the crowd, Gary. You're streaming out right now. Uh, as we continue on here, Soup, uh, uh, we are in, we're streaming from the High Tech Low Tech Studio uh, at an undisclosed location here in Saint Croix, Virgin Islands. No radio, no TV, internet only. Uh, catch all our recorded live shows on YouTube and Ustream uh, TV. Uh, search for our channel. It's your perspective talk show. And you'll see uh, many, many shows that we have there. Uh, big, up to, big up to our guest that we had last night. Uh, so we had Grandmaster Master Lewis, Lewis Jackson. Jackson. Uh, he was here talking about um, some karate and some jiu-jitsu. And more importantly, a big event coming up in May. Uh, the big uh, tournament that he's sponsoring. Um, international jiu-jitsu. Yeah, international tournament uh, in, in Rock City, St. Thomas. May 23rd and May 24th. Uh, the video is already on YouTube, so check it out. Uh, shout outs to uh, Kim Jerome, VI Poetry, and uh, Toby D was on uh, last week too, or the week before actually. And talking Alexis about, George. Uh, with Alexis George actually. Kim and Alexis were here, and then we had Toby D as well. Uh, we got two Facebook pages streaming live on the VI.com, and also a uh, Facebook page for the It's Your Perspective talk show. I uh, want to send a super shout out to uh, CHS Class in 1982. Uh, shout out to Vanessa of Rhythms and I Great Records, Julie and Sharice King, and all our past guests. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, you can also link us up through uh, Twitter as well. Tweet with us. Our handle there is VI Perspective. And we're moving straight forward on up, Soup. That's the way we've been doing it. Yes, sir. Uh, the show's mission is just to simply inform and empower and entertain everybody. Uh, so, Soup, you ready? Yes, sir. Ready to bless that mic with the It's Your Perspective poem, man. Greetings in the name of Kilimawi and Pai Vislasai, the first Ja Rastafari. The greatest secret in life is that reality is nothing more than illusion. The physical world does not exist outside of our own belief system and the filter of our own mind. We are, in fact, subparticles of Ja experiencing creation itself. But as subparticles of Ja, we are swayed over these creations. Everything you have experienced in life, every event, current, object, and person is nothing more than a figment of your own thoughts, beliefs, and words. The problem is, most of us are still asleep. The problem is, most of us are still asleep. When you overstand this, your entire world shifts and you come to realize the true meaning of life is thus like a lucid dream. We have total, total control. Yes, I Soup, that's the uh, It's Your Perspective talk show. Soup's been blessing us from uh, April of 2014 and continues to bless us every, uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, some Fridays, some Saturdays, and even some Sundays. And as, as promised, we do have uh, Arthur Gary James in studio again. Also, the phone number is 340-201-9005. Call in, call a friend, tell a friend. That's how it goes, man. Yeah. So, Gary, uh, welcome back. Um, hopefully, many of our, our viewers know now that you were one of our first um, guests on the show. and continue the first. To the first. Okay. And uh, continues to uh, maiden voyage. You took the maiden voyage with That's us, right? You know, <laughs> and he's yeah. still here uh, talking about his new book, Black Politics 2.0. His conversation continues, part eleven. So, Gary, how you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. Okay, my you know, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, tonight's show, and um, I'm, I just really uh, appreciate the. Uh, it's your perspective. 
poem. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, at some point in the future, um, I want to have that as uh, part of uh, the conversation. Yes, sir. In fact, um, you know, the whole idea of uh, the illusory nature of reality yes. and the physical world uh, is profound. That's right. You know, and uh, I have a particular uh, treatment of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that um, uh, I'm inspired to uh, uh, introduce, obviously not tonight, but uh, perhaps uh, sometime in, in, in the near future. Yes, sir, for sure. And I would probably put it uh, in the cat in the follow-up category to um, the science and religion okay piece yes uh, as I'm sure you would recall one of our conversations dealt with the fact that um, the controversy the ancient controversy between science and religion right has been 90 percent settled. You know, and we, we we discussed that. Right. But um, there's ten percent <laughs> remaining. Yes. And the ten percent is uh, not settled between the two. Right. Uh, but uh, there is interesting dialogue. Okay. You know, and uh, um, you know ideas that. Uh, uh, we want to uh, advance and, and, and talk about in that regard just to get people a little bit more familiar with right. the uh, mystical or the metaphysical realm yes you know yes. so uh, uh, we look forward to to dealing with that conversation definitely perhaps definitely. in our next uh, dispensation <laughs> as you know the uh, uh, the next uh, few shows, the next three shows, I, I'm, I'm, I've committed to 14, and uh, so this is the 11th show. Tonight is the 11th show on your perspective talk show. Yes. And uh, as I said, we committed to, to doing 14, uh, and so uh, we have three additional conversations before this dispensation ends. Right. Uh, so today's conversation will introduce a database by way of uh, a website that offers a parallel historical perspective to the conventional narrative regarding the origins and procession of Christianity in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, in the Western Hemisphere, we know Christianity in terms of Protestants and, and yeah, Catholics. Catholics. So uh, um, uh, that's where that's at. But uh, the remaining three conversations will also introduce website projects, uh, project initiatives. The uh, uh, initiatives include politics, intellectual substance, and economic slash business going forward. But today uh, I want to introduce the Balthazar Monastery, which discloses Africa's contribution to world Christianity by way of Ethiopia. Uh, the last time I shared, the last time I was here, I shared the website with our producers, Kimber and Soup, <laughs> uh, just to give them a preview of where I'm going with this controversial subject. However, before I introduce the website, I want to get some feedback from our cutting edge producers on that uh, uh, site to determine whether or not they endorse 
the introduction of this subject matter. Uh, I introduce it because it will be the basis of a next dispensation on It's Your Perspective talk show, should our illustrious producers grant me a new slot. Anytime, anytime, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> But before I uh, ask for their feedback, I want to um, provide an overview of Balbazar, who was one of the three wise kings of the Magi, who visited the infant Jesus Christ with offerings, along with his colleagues Melchior and Gaspar. Balthazar was from Ethiopia and he subsequent to presenting his offerings of myrrh returned to his country and issued a first call to worship which is called the Nez Gid in the Ethiopian language. But the point is the heritage of Balthazar is a covenant with the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And the Magi, as some may know, are priest kings in the tradition of Melchizedek, as mentioned in the Old Testament, Genesis. And Prophet Abraham, the father of Judaism, Christianity and Islam paid tithes to Melchizedek and Jesus the Christ was also a priest king for life after the order of Melchizedek. So the journey of the three wise kings of the Magi during the first millennium is recorded in New Testament Gospels, uh, Matthews and the other as well. But it is propitious that now in the second decade of the third millennium, the abbot of the Balbazar Monastery authorized for public consumption a database outlining the Balbazar Monastery and offering a parallel account of the historical procession of Christology. Kimba and Soup are the first among the general public to have gotten a preview of the website and we would appreciate any feedback that uh, they might want to share uh, regarding that site because I would just like to know that I have their individual and collective endorsement <laughs> for what I am about to uh, uh, disclose. So perhaps uh, you could uh, uh, let me and the public know <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I, uh, I didn't really read it closely. Mm -hmm. uh, I just actually printed it out. It's uh, 18 pages. Um, so I'll have to like read it. But uh, Gary, I, I feel confident, man, if you're doing it, it's, 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 it's the right, we're on the right track. It's information that we all need. Okay. Um, but I, I can give you some more information in another few days, uh, a little more detailed uh, information if that's what you, if that's what you need. No, 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 no problem at, at your leisure. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to know that it's 18 pages. Yeah, I, ju I, ju I, ju I just literally printed it. Wow. <laughs> 18 pages. <Yeah. laughs> um, well, there is considerable information there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I, um, from the first time you, you put it out there, I went, I, I, I went on it and I, I've been checking it out. And um, the information is dynamic. It's, it's, is what Plentiful. we need is, is, is what we need right now of what's happening within the earth within within creation right now so mm -hmm. i endorse it 200 percent. you know what i mean so yeah and, and then again too we know it's coming from you 
a highly respected um, teacher of this of this um, of this curriculum of this of this base. So I, I, um, you got my endorsement, one hundred percent. You know, you know, if and buts about it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I, I I appreciate that, my brothers. So uh, uh, for public consumption, let me just uh, uh, give you the website. Obviously, it's triple W. Balbazar, B A L T H A Z A R Monastery, M O N A S T E R Y dot com. We were very inspired, I was very inspired um, when the abbot of the monastery made the historical overview of Ethiopia and Africa's contribution to Christology available for public consumption. This introduction of the Balbazar Monastery database is in fact a pre-launch scenario and an official launch will occur in about 12 or 16 months uh, uh, from now. But in the meantime, uh, we release it as a preview with the instruction that the site is in the process of becoming. And the work in process will ultimately be professionally designed with interactive applications. It will include videos, questions and inquiries, topical com commentary, etc. So uh, check it out now and stay tuned, <laughs> you know, uh, peruse the 18 pages, 18 pages, yeah. and uh, uh, feel free to uh, uh, comment on the show, or uh, you could contact uh, me directly by way of my uh, uh, email address, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, responding uh, to you. But as usual, this this preview is an exclusive to It's Your Perspective talk show. Yes, sir. Just yes. as uh, uh, my book was. And I'm in the process of uh, uh, doing some marketing okay. things. And uh, some radio shows and so forth. And uh, so after I finish my 14 shows, I'm going to take a little time off to do that go to the state, see some family, and by August or uh, uh, September, depending upon your schedule, okay. I look to uh, uh, be back and uh, we'll take it further. Yes, sir. And uh, hopefully it will be within our next dispensation. So um, we, uh, we, we will explore some pertinent subject matter as they may relate to current events. But the unfolding events in the Middle East will likely remain a central factor among news media and others as the centuries-old political paradigm in the Middle East is apparently shifting. The political, economic, and strategic status quo in the region is being challenged by insurgent military forces of extremist Sunni Muslims in the framework of ISIS, ISIL, Al-Qaeda, and the Kar Karazan group, for example. But the current phenomena in the Middle East is essentially an internal catharsis based in Sunni Islam specifically and Islam in general. At the end of the day, 
the relative outcome of what may be a birth of reformation within the religion of Islam will directly impact the regional policies of the United States and Western powers. While it remains to be seen how the Middle East will ultimately shake out, it's a foregone conclusion that the political and economic influence of the West will diminish in the region moving forward. Needless to say, the fortunes of the West is linked with Saudi Arabia's regional hegemony and is opposed to the political and economic ascendance of Iran who are heirs to the former Persian Empire. Iranians are not Arabs. Improved relations between the United States and Western powers were politicized against Iran further in view of the Israeli ancient animus if not paranoia about the military objectives of Iran against them. Hence the current open lines of communication and recent nuclear negotiations with Iran and the United States have two influential detractors going forward. But the emergence of Iran as a legitimate regional power cannot be underestimated or understated as they are a macro player and stakeholder and a con consequential factor in the future Middle East. Uh, obviously I'm digressing on this Middle East thing because as you know the, the, the Middle East as we currently know it in terms of the respective countries and boundaries as well as their ruling elites were established following the end of World War I by Britain, France, and America. The former Ottoman Empire, the allies of Germany during World War I, were the masters of the region heretofore. And of course, subsequent to World War I, the British and French occupied the Middle East, directly or indirectly, and the boundaries distinguishing the countries were imposed by the West. Therefore, the Middle East, such as it is, was a creature of the Western powers. And the Middle East will occupy center stage in international news for the foreseeable future. But the established boundaries are currently being challenged and may be in meltdown as a result of the insurgent military forces of extremist Sunni Muslims vis-a-vis -vis ISIS, ISIL, and Al-Qaeda. We are just digressing on the Middle East for a few reasons. A, the region is the birthplace of the religions of Abraham and the Balthazar Monastery is a repository of information associated with Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And these are hot topic topics of the day and we should not shy away from them what we should do is try to get a fuller understanding of them and not 
simply take the word of the powers that be or the news media reports or political officials. The second reason is that the region will remain a focal point and nexus of world events as they are unfolding and will likely remain a significant hotspot for the foreseeable future. In addition to uh, the religious dimension, the region is also an important intersection wherein the competing secular powers of the world calculate and manipulate power relationships. The region is the venue of end times eschatology, which is graphically expressed in the theology of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It's popularly called the apocalypse. And so the specter of the apocalypse is what we are faced with today in the world and many people speculate uh, on this end time eschatology scenario. The popular perception that there is a war between Christians and Muslims is a pervasive idea that seems to be gaining resonance according to media hype, electoral politics, among other maneuvers. The emotionalism that is generated by the popular Christian and Muslim juxtaposition serves the purpose purposes of war hawks and the secular powers that be both public and private, seen and unseen. So, the ancient animus outlined in popular history between Christians and Muslims deserves further examination and scrutiny. Moreover, when we examine the historical procession of secular power, we observe that there is an attending religious dimension associated with conquest and the imperial objectives of secular power historically. And in this context, the Christian and Muslim juxtaposition is a convenient narrative that stokes the emotions and fears of the unknown. The question of who benefits from this confusion is an interesting and fair question. And we need to ponder that. What is known is that the majority of people in the world have been deceived and the deception continues with reckless abandonment. Some suggest that there is a conspiracy to keep the masses of people ignorant of the objective facts regarding real-time developments in the world. In terms of the so-called war between Christians and Muslims, or the so-called Islamic Jihadist war against the West, there is much that is not said, and pertinent information is not disclosed. The differences and ancient conflicts between Christianity and Islam throughout human events is a popular subject of informal conversation and it's profounded, propounded 
in news reports and in political rhetoric of public officials. On the other hand, the profound similarities between the two religions are generally glossed over if they are considered or mentioned at all. Therefore, the popular imagination and discourse envisages and parrots the conventional ideas and general information. The fact that Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are religions of Abraham is an example of a fact that is glossed over and not dissected to uncover essential truths that bind them. Apart from originating from the same source, all three religions reference the same prophets by way of Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, among others, as well as end of days prophecy in their respective canon of scripture. We will in brief detail take a closer look at the Old Testament prophet Abraham. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Abraham was married to Sarah and after years of attempting to give birth to an heir of Abraham, Sarah informed Abraham that she was barren and could not bear him a son. Ultimately, Sarah proposed to Abraham that he should be with her handmaid, Hagar. So, Hagar, God blessed with a child and the heir of Abraham. And Hagar begot Ishmael, the firstborn of Abraham. A couple of years subsequent, Sarah was blessed with a child who was given the name Isaac. After a time, tensions began to mount between Hagar and Sarah, which ultimately resulted in Hagar and Ishmael relocating away from Abraham's community. To make a long story short, Christianity originated from the line of Isaac while Islam began from the line of Ishmael. And I raise these points because all we hear in popular rhetoric, news reports, etc. is the animus and antagonism and uh, adversarial relationship between Christianity and Islam. But they're from the same family. Not that families don't have colorful and uh, infamous disputes. But the point is there are similarities there that should not be overlooked especially when uh, detractors for other reasons, other ulterior motives may want to see a conflicting scenario between the two. So we will leave the organic Christian and Muslim dynamic there and we will return to the topic from time to time particularly when we are exploring subjects 
pertinent to the Balazar Monastery mandate. And you'll appreciate and understand the mandate when you get a chance to visit the 18 pages. <laughs> 18 page website, right? <laughs> That is expanding. It's in the process of becoming. And this is just know. the main page. I don't know if some of the other links might have other stuff too. Oh, well. This is just the main. Well, landing. that's 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 the main page. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's probably probably about. I'm sure there's a hundred or more pages okay. all together. Okay. Okay. You know. Okay. But the uh, uh, the introduction page is what you're looking which at. Is what you're talking about. Yep. Uh, uh, is very instructive, you know, uh, and should uh, uh, generate uh, your attention and interest. That's for sure. So, um, throughout history, or history also promotes this. Uh, or however we want to emphasize the fact that secular governments such as the United States throughout their history also promote a religious dimension that accompanies their advancement and development in the world. For example, America was developed and settled in the 1600s to a large extent by Protestants, the Puritans. Most of us are familiar with the acronym WASP, WASP, meaning White Anglo Saxon Protestant, who are the macro factors in the economic and political control that the United States enjoys. We all grew up knowing that wasps were in control. That's a foregone uh, conclusion. And many of us remember that Senator John F. Kennedy was the first and only Roman Catholic president to be elected to the United States. Interestingly enough, the New World, America, was discovered and claimed by the Roman Catholic Church on behalf of Spain vis-a-vis -vis Christopher Columbus and his exploits. Hence, there is much irony between church and state in America. Accordingly, the religion dimension is not only advanced by respective religion, the religion dimension is also advanced by secular governments and powers in America. The objectives of the secular powers determine how convenient and relevant the religious rhetoric is relative to their economic, political, and geopolitical priorities. Now, I would be remiss in introducing the uh, uh, Baldazar Monastery. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my teacher, mentor, and spiritual father, His Excellency, the Jazz Match Amaha Abira Zion Kaza who has a distinguished pedigree and is affectionately known by his students as Professor Kaza. 
I was sponsored by the Order of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah by way of Professor Kaza. As I studied under his guidance from 1983 to 2003, he was an advisor to the Emperor of Ethiopia, served in various official capacities such as Governor General of the country, Ambassador to the former Yugoslavia and West Germany, and was the representative of Ethiopia at Geneva. Professor Kaza is the founder of the Balthazar Monastery. And for your information, Sue, Professor Kaza, when he was the Governor General under uh, Emperor Haile Selassie, he settled the brethren them, the Rastafari, in Shashimani land. So he is well known and respected by the brethren them and um, his admonishment to them is that everything must be done in decency and in order. And so uh, I reflect on that often and I essentially close tonight's show with uh, uh, my acknowledgement uh, uh, of my teacher and, and, and spiritual father and uh, um, uh, perhaps if there are any uh, points of questions or response that uh, you might want to uh, 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 share, uh, we'll be happy to, to deal with them. But uh, apart from that, um, I'm, I'm very pleased to have had uh, word from the abbot that this website would be disclosed and the general public would be made aware of the progress uh, and development that will take place within the auspices of the Balthasar uh, Monastery. And we uh, need to take uh, heed to the fact that this is, we are in the second decade of the third millennium so uh, whereas uh, the idea of the apocalyptic time is here the third millennium is prophetic in terms of that and this is the period of time in which we are graced to be living in. So we, uh, uh, we rejoice in that, uh, as well as be mindful that these are very dangerous and tricky times as well. But uh, we need to stay mindful that while so much is going on in the world, that is completely out of our control as black folk and the masses of people in general, we must be mindful that blessings come in elaborate <laughs> disguises, you see. So uh, uh, we don't necessarily need to do anything as much as we need to uh, be prayful, you see, and uh, 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 appreciate that 
we need not entertain evil. You see? So uh, we don't give evil any energy. We give it no energy. We let it do its thing and we do our thing based upon who we are and what we are. So uh, with that, uh, I'm done in terms of my general uh, uh, presentation uh, uh, for this evening. And obviously we, I'm finishing up much earlier than usual, but uh, I'm doing it deliberately just because I, I don't want to put anything beyond uh, what I just laid out and uh, uh, with respect to my mentor and what uh, uh, he has uh, uh, offered us and provided me with a mandate <laughs> to deal with. <laughs> So uh, um, with that, I sign off for this evening's show, and God bless us all. All right, uh, that's uh, Arthur Gary James. Uh, thank you again for coming out. Um, Black Politics 2.0, uh, new book and new website. Uh, Balthazar, uh, Balthazar Monastery. Monastery. Dot com. Uh, I'm just kind of scanning through. I don't have to like look, read this in closer detail here. Um, but he'll be talking a little bit more about that uh, uh, coming up here um, in the next um, couple of weeks. Here, uh, one thing I wanted to tell you too, Gary, was that uh, I made a I made a food par on the schedule. Mm -hmm. And so your next time here, today's the 30th of April. Your next time here will be not in two weeks, but in three weeks. Okay. That's, uh, I, 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 I could work with that. Yeah. I actually screwed up on the schedule there. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's, that's okay. I, I could work with that because, um, uh, as you know, I ordered uh, some books. Okay. Uh, and I'm in the process of developing uh, uh, my marketing okay. scenario. All right. So uh, I could use the extra Good week. Time. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it worked out perfectly. It, didn't work so it worked out. It worked out. Worked out perfectly. Yes, sir. Because yes. I want to schedule some uh, 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 some radio uh, uh, interviews. Okay. I thought about uh, uh, what is it? Sixteen twenty. The the Mario show. Sure. Right. Right. Uh, you know, from what from what I hear, he's an excellent interviewer. Yes. Yes. He sure and, is. And uh, is a very well. Well, very well read yes right. yeah. you know and I, I met him a few years ago in fact he he's read a couple of my books okay okay know? he's author himself too yeah I know I, yes. I, I, yes. I read a few of his yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to uh, 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 sitting down with him okay, uh, okay. Uh, for the first time and and, and, and doing some follow-up uh, 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 shows as well right you know okay but that focus will be primarily on uh, uh, Black Politics 2.0. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gary, thank you. Uh, thank you, my brother. Today was uh, Black Politics 2.0. His conversation continues part 11. Right. We just wrapped up now. He'll be doing part 12 uh, on May 21st, 8 p.m. Uh, so definitely tune in for that uh, as well. Uh, what date again is that? May May 21st. 21st. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, May 21st. Uh, Thursday, uh, not two weeks, but three weeks out yep. from today. That's good. Yeah. Um, so, Soup, any, any, anything you want to add, man? Uh, um, Gary, keep doing a wonderful job. But I, I don't want to step into it. I just, um, <laughs> can't just, just, just thank you. Continue to do what you're doing because this information is very pertinent in these, in these days that we live in, in these times. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. You know, so. And it brings a lot of things to light. So people just need to be aware and just read and just inform themselves, yeah, you know? And, yeah, and, so. and apply, and, and apply, apply this stuff. Right. They got to apply. Right. Application is it. Is yeah. it, yeah. yeah. So. There's no sense reading this stuff and not applying it to yeah. your personal yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. going to really, yeah. Yeah. it's not going to help you. Yeah. 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 Okay, I always want to thank you for coming out, man. Um, you know, first guest and you're still here and so um we're always glad to have you 
and we'll always have you, you know. I mean, you see value in what we're doing, and and uh, we we'll just want to say thank you, you know. Yep. Yeah, well, I see big value <laughs> in what you guys are doing, and it really complements what I'm doing. Right. There's some things, that, as I mentioned before, that I wanted to get into in terms of uh, uh, high tech with the uh, uh, videos and so forth. Right. I, bought, I bought a camera, but uh, you guys came right on time. <laughs> yes, I, yes, <laughs> so, I. you know, it uh, was kind of a baptism by fire, but I'm getting used to uh, uh, the venue, Okay. Right, you know, and uh, the technology. So that is excellent uh, going forward. And I have some ideas that uh, perhaps we could work on uh, uh, together right? in terms of uh, 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 developing the various tracks that can uh, be developed from the base and core that you have already established right. because that's the main, <laughs> that's, yes. that's the main piece. Right. So, uh, uh, you 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 have me inspired and thinking. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> thinking mind is a good mind, you yes, know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, but again, let me just say, um, as I have so often, I love you, brothers. Yes, sir. And there's Thank nothing you. you can do about it. Yes, I love you too, B. <laughs> love you too, man. Gary, thank you very much. Yes, um, yes. Jagai Rastafari lives one perfect all love. Right. You know. Yeah, and uh, I like to say one perfect love is our prayers and his blessings. When you put it all together, you get one perfect love, man. So uh, today is uh, Thursday, and uh, we'll be off for the next uh, four days. We'll be back on Tuesday, next week Tuesday, uh, uh, with more some more fun stuff. And uh, we'll just leave it at that. So everybody have a good weekend. I know. Uh, be safe, Carnival. Be safe in St. Uh, Thomas Rock City. Yeah. Yes, don't get don't get too wild, y'all. Just just <laughs> just be safe. Yeah. The Juve went down without a hitch. That was beautiful. That was real beautiful. So just continue the rest three days like that. You know. Yeah. yeah. And the, the other thing I want to say too is that Hurricane C, uh, is quickly approaching. Fast here. approaching. So go ahead and start stocking up on your all your stuff. Your water. When, when does it begin? When? June first to November thirtieth. Yeah. June first. Wow, it's coming right here. Yeah, it's right June, here. Yeah. 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 So sure. stock up on your water, your pampers, your dry, f your dry food, your medications. extra medications, yeah, um, all that stuff. Just, just get extra stuff just in case some things should go wrong. Mm, yep. Um, you know, you can survive for, uh, you know, a few days, maybe a week, ten days. Uh, hopefully, uh, things will get back normal if we do get hit with something uh, before that. Um, but yeah, we'll just leave it at that. It's uh, real quick soup. This is the It's Your Perspective talk show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 p.m. until some, uh, including some Fridays, Saturdays, and even some Sundays. Yes. Uh, my name is David, aka Kemba, aka Christian, alongside Bingy Soup. Yeah, Soup. We're going to leave it at that. And uh, we are out. Catch you later. Peace. Peace. Can I have a night from the carbon if I was lana? Sell black low man, the beach white sun. In a cup of war, in a nick like iron.